Are you old enough to remember web hit counters? Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, almost all websites had hit counters. They were a way of showing visitors that it was a popular website and a way of showing the website creators that all that hard work hadn't been for nothing. Seeing a hit counter reminds me of a time when the World Wide Web was a much simpler place. My name is Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations, and the other day, while being swept up in web nostalgia, I decided that I wanted to build an old-fashioned website that would work well on a vintage computer. I then decided that this idea could be made even more ridiculous by hosting that website on some vintage hardware and then inviting my viewers to visit the site. The first thing I had to do was decide on the hardware for the web server. I'm a vintage Mac collector, so naturally it would be an Apple Macintosh. I wanted something reasonably compact, so I decided to use a Macintosh LC3. Released by Apple in February 1993, the LC3 was the successor to the Macintosh LC2. Thanks to the LC3's 32-bit bus and higher clock speed, it offered twice the performance of its predecessor, but was sold for $1,349, significantly less than the original sale price of the LC2. This improvement in specifications and lower price made the LC3 a very successful computer. It has a 25 MHz Motorola 68030 CPU, 512 kilobytes of onboard VRAM, expandable to 768 kilobytes with a 256 kilobyte SIM, 4 megabytes of onboard RAM, plus a 72 pin RAM slot, allowing for a maximum of 36 megabytes of RAM. It also has an LC processor direct expansion slot, a 1.4 megabyte floppy drive, and the option for an 80 or 160 megabyte hard drive. As with virtually all vintage Macs of this era, some restoration work is required. The LC3 is populated with 11 of these surface mount electrolytic capacitors that are all well past their expected lifespan and are starting to leak. So the first step is to remove these old electrolytic capacitors, replace them with new tantalum capacitors, and then give the board a good clean to get rid of 30 years of dirt, corrosion and grime. An interesting anomaly with the LC3 is that it came from the factory with a mistake. The capacitor in position C22 is actually on backwards, so when I replaced it, I made sure to put it the right way around. The LC3 also has a socket for an optional 68882 math coprocessor, also known as a floating point unit. This will speed up the computer's ability to perform calculations on floating point numbers, which are numbers with a decimal point. 68882 FPU chips are still readily available, and I bought these ones on eBay. They're rated at 40 MHz, which is faster than the 25 MHz clock speed of this Mac, but they'll still work fine. This unit has a 512K VRAM SIM installed, which technically gives it one megabyte of VRAM, but the LC3 will only recognize a maximum of 768 kilobytes. And it has a 16 megabyte RAM SIM installed, so combined with the four megabytes of onboard RAM, it has a total of 20 megabytes, more than enough for what I have planned. Like other Macs of this vintage, the LC3 uses a SCSI hard drive. This LC3 actually came with a functional hard drive, but I won't be using it. I'm concerned about its reliability, so I want to use a modern alternative. The two market leaders in this space are the Blue SCSI and Zulu SCSI. Functionally, they're very similar, allowing you to use a disk image on a FAT32 formatted SD card as a hard drive. And I use both the Blue SCSI and Zulu SCSI in my vintage Mac collection. One advantage the Blue SCSI has is the open source nature of the product. So I can order the blank PCBs for just a few dollars each, then order all of the components and assemble them myself. If you have the skills to build your own, it's an incredibly cost effective option. And given how many vintage Macs I own, keeping the price down is very important. There are lots of surface mount components, and it usually takes me a little over an hour to get the Blue SCSI from a bare PCB to a functional hard drive emulator. If I'm going to use this LC3 as a web server, it makes sense that it'll need to be networked. 
The LC3 didn't have Ethernet capability by default, but it does have an LC processor direct slot that can be populated with a network card. Luckily, I found this spare Farallon network card in the cupboard, so I'm ready to go. There is also a second networking option. If you have a Blue SCSI or Zulu SCSI that uses a Raspberry Pi Pico W development board with built-in Wi-Fi capability, you can actually set up the SCSI emulator to connect to your Wi-Fi network. The range isn't very good and it's slow as shit, but it does work. I did a few comparison tests and not surprisingly, the Farallon network card was the much faster option. So now the hardware is ready to go, I need to set up the web hosting software. This is actually ridiculously easy. If you source the Internet Explorer 4 browser software from an abandonware software library like Macintosh Garden, this actually includes basic web hosting software as standard. It uses a very early version of Microsoft's Active Server Pages server-side script interpreter. You won't be running WordPress on it anytime soon, but there are quite a good range of functions available. It also includes some useful documentation to get you started. This functionality will allow me to set up a fancy hit counter on my site. Once installed, the personal web server software will create a directory called My Personal Website. Just put your web source files in here, launch the web server, press start, and you're hosting. So now the web server is connected to the internet, it has web hosting software, all I need is a website. I host a website called Recapper Mac. It's an online resource that contains high-res images and guides for recapping a number of vintage Macintoshes. I decided that it might be fun to create an old HTML4 version of this site. It would be necessary for me to drastically reduce the size of the images to the point where they're wildly impractical, but it would be a fun exercise. So I set to work creating the Recapper Mac site and then hosting it with the domain name 68k.com.au in recognition of the Motorola 68k CPUs used in many of these old Macs. Along with hit counters, another thing you rarely see these days are frames. Frames would allow you to divide up the page into different sections, then load a page into each section. This site has a header frame, a navigation frame, and a content frame. When you click on one of the links in the navigation frame, it loads the relevant page into the content frame. While building this site, I had to regularly remind myself that this wasn't about making the site look good, but to make it look old. So I had to resist using any trickery to try and make it look more modern. Testing using Pingdom shows the homepage load time at around six and a half seconds. It's not brilliant, but all things considered, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I want to test it on something much older. I have here an old Macintosh SE30. It has a custom ROM from Kero's Mac Mods, 32 megabytes of RAM, and a blue SCSI that I'm using to wirelessly connect to the internet. I have System 7.1 installed with Open Transport 1.3 and Internet Explorer version 3. The home page loads in about 56 seconds. That's pretty slow, but at least it does it. This site has lots of JPEG images in it. Why we think nothing of that with modern computers? An old 16 megahertz 68030 CPU has its work cut out for it decoding JPEG files. Navigating the site is pretty slow and tedious, but it's doing it. It's pretty amazing when you think of it. I'm surfing the web with a computer that came out in 1989. I have one last trick up my sleeve to try and squeeze every last bit of performance from this LC3. There is actually an overclocking mod you can perform, which will take the CPU's clock speed from 25 megahertz to 33 megahertz. This is just a matter of moving a zero ohm resistor from position R14 to position R74. I also need to make sure I have System Enabler 308 and System Enabler 003 in the system folder. Otherwise, the system won't boot. I was concerned about the impact this mod may have on the operating temperature of the CPU, so I whipped out the thermal camera. Here's a before and after, and the higher clock speed has increased the CPU temperature by only three degrees Celsius. So, will I see any noticeable difference in load times after the upgrade? Nope.
No difference at all. I can't say I'm too surprised. I suspect the networking is the bottleneck here. I do hope this has been a fun walk down memory lane and I do hope you'll take a moment to visit my silly little website to see how well the LC3 goes with a bit of traffic. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.